Under Armour, the stock's up 24% this year. It's done a little better than the market. Based on what you're seeing, does it deserve to? Probably not. Under Armour has gone through a phase where they overexpanded, they went into Kohl's, they went downstream, therefore there was overpromotions. They're cleaning up the channel, right? So now they're kind of right-sizing inventory, and the street has this expectation that margins are going to improve. But the problem is they have distributed as much as they possibly can, and I would argue their top line is needs to shrink further, particularly in the off-price channel. Yeah, do they want to keep going down market? No, so that's the issue here is that they fail to kind of segment. So Nike has, you know, the premium, the mid-market. They haven't done that effectively. So, you know, where are they now? Basically, they're seeing their vendors shrink their space in the stores because not only is there so much competition is created by themselves, but also, um, you know, the, the, um, the shelf space is just is, is shrinking for them. So the numbers maybe don't belie the stock move. Let's switch gears now because for years Adidas benefited from retro Stan Smith sneakers, sort of the look. Uh, is that dying? Is retro finally becoming in the past? I think retro that has been here, what, for five years, particularly in Europe and now, you know, in the States for about three years, is finally starting to slow down here. So Adidas was the first one. It was the original retro, retro brand. Mm -hmm. And that has slowed down. Europe is negative. But, of course, the stock's up big because... Beyonce, 133 million, 133 million Instagram followers, she's going to do a collaboration. So it's all about collaboration in the space. But at the end of the day, Nike is still the one to beat. They're still the leader here. You don't think Beyonce can, can, can drag Adidas back into the future, I guess, however how you want to put it? I don't think Beyonce is going to be, uh-oh, uh-oh, that's a terrible joke for, for Nike. Well, the market has been crazy in love with the yeah, stock. That is right. How was that? We should do a duet with we, uh, no, with the Edge. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that would not be. That would be three. Segment. That's yeah. not the duet. There'd be three of us then. Sorry. The... Let's move on and talk about Lululemon because Lululemon is what they may put sort of mini gyms in their stores. They're so, like, are they going to turn into a gym? Is this a good strategy? So this is what you're hearing in retail. It's all about experience. It's all about how can we we drive the customer in. Lululemon <laughs> on their recent analyst day talked about the fact that they're going to do a test store mm -hmm. with a meditation room, with a gym. Throw in Kohl's recently talked about that they're doing Planet Fitness in some stores. So you look at retail and you go, is it going to become a gym? And also think about Lululemon. They're starting to do deodorant, dry hair shampoo, consumer products. Well, they they're want going to keep to you there. Footwear. What's wrong with that? There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But, you know, you kind of look at the ecosystem and say, what are, what are these retailers going to look like? Well, they have to. Listen, Urban Outfitters a couple years ago bought, bought Mark pizza. Vetri's pizzeria pizza. chain. Right. I mean, you, you, you're walking by, you smell the pizza, you turn in, it didn't work? It hasn't helped? It didn't change the, game, change the game. I'll tell you what changes the game for these guys is looking at bigger sizes. So Nike, Lululemon, they've all looked at women's sizing and are starting to speak to the consumer differently and speak to the average woman. By the way, the average American woman is a size 14 or above, 70% of them are. So now... It's, it's seven, 70%? 70% of U.S. women are a size 14 or above, most of these brands don't even have a size 14. They're just starting to but go it's, into And it's the not category. just women. I mean, as a, as, a, as a consumer, I'd like to consider myself husky. <laughs> big boned, as my mother That's would say. That's it. I'm big that boned. That was my mom's. Is yeah. you go into certain stores, I'm like, nothing fits. Right. Nothing fits, I leave. Are, are other retailers going to have to adjust? I understand you want to be cool and slim and what, but they're going to have to adjust to the changing face and changing body yes. of the American, and by the way, global consumer. And, and also, remember Hollister? They used to be the original, like, skinny, skinny, make teenagers feel bad about themselves. But yeah, and they had, like, they, they had like 17 year old models strutting around outside the stores. They evolved. Now they're more inclusive. Nike, their messaging is so different now. When you go into a store, you see women on the wall. You know, in running that look out like us. That look human. They look like us. Right. And Lululemon, again, they're doing size 14 online. They're not doing it in store. What I would like to see from them is to roll that out in store.